Welcome back. Now, it's been a minute, but slowly but surely, Danelle's fortunes are turning. The state-owned arms manufacturer says that it has posted a profit of earnings before interest and tax of 390 million rand in the year to end March 2023. Now, Danelle appeared before Parliament's Standing Committee on Public Accounts yesterday on a number of issues, including the entity's liquidity status, as well as investigations that have been conducted by the Special Investigating Unit. It. The state-owned company has not uh, produced a profit since 2016-17 financial year. Now, Danelle in August last year finally settled outstanding salaries using 992 million rand from the Danelle Medical Benefit Trust. And in March this year, it received 1.8 billion rand in bailout funding from the National Treasury, and it is using this to resume production. So for more on the turning fortunes of Danelle, we joined by Danelle's interim group CEO, Michael Hobe. Mr. Hobe, thanks so much for your time. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning and good morning to your viewers and, uh, and thank you for having me this morning. So I think it's been a while since uh, there have been smiles at Danelle. Uh, you know, we talk about 2016-17. This was an entity that uh, was one that South Africa was fairly proud of in terms of uh, what it produced and also the fact that it was a profitable entity. And then all of a sudden things went really pear-shaped to a point where Danelle couldn't even pay salaries. Uh, but now uh, you have informed Parliament that you've managed to turn a corner. Uh, what has led to that? Yeah, uh, once again, thanks for the opportunity, Sakina. I think uh, <clears throat> we, we indeed, uh, we've, we've, we've had uh, a very difficult period, especially since 2020, uh, made worse by, by the COVID pandemic, where we, we saw our operations really slow down. Um, I think where we are is we had to have an internal reflection in terms of where we are and where we want to go. Um, and hence the, the turnaround plan that we started, which looked at the internal environment, which looked at the external environment, uh, that also uh, gave us a clear view that we needed leadership uh, to go forward. I think with the, with the current board, uh, we have been able to refine the turnaround plan. Uh, we have uh, submitted the turnaround plan to the shareholder in the Department of Public Enterprise Prices. Um, and it is on the back of that turnaround plan uh, that uh, we engaged with, uh, with National Treasury, obviously through uh, the Department of Public Enterprises for a recapitalization of the business. The turnaround plan uh, has a funding model which is in two parts. The first part looks at uh, Danelle looking internally to itself and sourcing uh, internal funds. And we did this through uh, identifying um, uh, assets that we refer as non-core uh, that we will no longer need going forward and um, uh, looking at uh, at certain uh, certain you mentioned the Danel Medical Benefit Trust uh, which is what what we refer to as the DMBT uh, where we had a surplus fund in there uh, to to your point uh, 992 million that we're able uh, to access from that uh, from that be medical benefit trust um, which forms part of the first part of, uh, of, uh, of the funding model. The second part was the, the recapitalization. We clearly identified that we, we needed to get support from the shareholder in terms of uh, the recapitalization. Um, after a, a number of uh, engagements with the National Treasury and the DPE, uh, we were able to secure a recap of uh, 3.4 billion. Uh, the 3.4 billion obviously came with conditions in terms of uh, in terms of releasing the national treasury releasing the funds uh, to date we can confirm that uh, uh, the funds have been released to us we only have access to the 1.8 billion uh, so that has uh, gone a long way in terms of uh, uh, turning the fortunes of the now um, the talking back to the the not being able to pay the salaries and the access to the the medical benefit trust the 992 uh, assisted us to to turn things around, to to stabilize the organization, to to uh, talk to our supplier base because uh, also our supplier base, uh, our suppliers uh, had stopped uh, supplying us because we had stopped paying them. Um, we were able to by and large uh, stabilize the business, um, and uh, with the recap funds, we are able to restart operations, and uh, we are able to uh, sustain the business and uh, and focus on the export opportunities that are there. Uh, that uh, that will uh, ensure that the business grows. 
So this, this turnaround plan essentially was in three parts. Uh, we, we had a stabilized phase where we needed to stabilize the operations. We needed to, uh, to uh, uh, stabilize the workforce because we had not paid them. Uh, we needed to pay them. We needed to stabilize the, the supplier base. Uh, the sustained phase uh, looks at uh, uh, securing uh, the local business, uh, 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 ensuring that operations are running to get their cash into the business um, and, uh, and to focus on uh, the opportunities that are there. The growth phase, uh, uh, which is uh, the last phase of our turnaround, essentially looks at, <clears throat> looks at, um, uh, looks at uh, the opportunity pipeline that is there. We've identified about 30 billion of opportunities, uh, especially in the export market, uh, that are out, for the, out there for us to go and, uh, and capture. So we are in the process of uh, all of those activities. So, you know, speaking of, you know, suppliers and uh, the problems that you had there, Mr. Kobe, how many active contracts does Danel have at the moment, uh, uh, orders and uh, for equipment uh, that you have currently? And what is the total value of all of that? Um, we've previously spoken about an order book of about seven billion. Um, the bulk of that order book relates to the local uh, defense force, uh, the South African National Defense Force. Um, and uh, and uh, the the export market um, the the orders we've uh, we've been like, executing some of those orders uh, and this is where we need to uh, create a focus on is to uh, to create a balance uh, in terms of that order book so that it is not uh, it is not uh, uh, solely dependent on uh, on the local uh, on the local national defense force but that uh, we have it. We have a diversity of revenue in the business. So at this point, it's uh, in the region of about seven billion that uh, that we have that needs to be executed. Obviously, these are orders that are that will not be executed over over a year. It's uh, it's multi year orders. Uh, we need to grow that order book uh, to ensure that uh, the, uh, the business is sustainable into the future. You mentioned the South African National Defence Force. Now, they have said that you'd only been able to satisfactorily meet about 53% of the prime mission equipment orders during the past year. Uh, is that correct? And uh, how will you now be able to meet those contractual obligations? Yeah, the 50% the, the performance that you referred to primarily relates to, to where the organisation has been uh, in terms of... Uh, the, the the suppliers where we are not able to pay the suppliers where we are not able to, to pay our employees uh, to come and do the work and execute to make sure that the prime mission equipment is uh, is remains available for the national defense force uh, going forward uh, part of this uh, this funding model that have, uh, i've sketched out uh, essentially uh, stabilizes that situation uh, our suppliers we are starting are starting to supply to us uh, our employees are coming to work uh, our operations, uh, we've restarted the operations and uh, we are working very closely with the, with the National Defence Force uh, to ensure that uh, we are able to, to support them in the execution of their mandate. Among the woes that uh, uh, Danel has experienced was, of course, uh, the exodus of many skilled personnel um, that left uh, uh, Danel Dynamics uh, during those difficult years uh, when it paid to fa failed to pay salaries, among other things. So uh, with regard to your skills base, are you satisfied with that or do you still have gaps that need to be filled at this point? We do have gaps that need to be filled. Uh, you are correct that uh, we have had a uh, significant loss of skills, especially in the in the missile business, the, the Denial Dynamics Division that you talk about. Um, we part of part of the the turnaround plan is we've defined a model uh, going forward where previously we were we would do everything internally to Denial. Our model is to uh, to identify critical core capabilities that we need to retain and work with, uh, with local industry and uh, international partners to ensure that we deliver uh, on the products that we have. Um, we, we are rebuilding the organization. Uh, we, we are in contact with some of the employees that uh, we have lost. Unfortunately, some uh, uh, we've lost uh, to our shores. Uh, they've gone overseas where there were opportunities, but some of the ones that are local, uh, we are talking to them with a view of uh, bringing them back where we cannot bring them back, we are also uh, talking to, to the, some of these companies that they may have joined to look at the model where we, they can continue to support us uh, and we are able to deliver on, uh, on the key uh, uh, equipment that we have, to, uh, we have to deliver to the Defense Force.
Um, Mr. Kobe, you spoke earlier about uh, the disposal of non-core assets. Um, what core assets, non-core assets are those exactly? And, you know, while speaking to that, there was also an allegation that was made regarding malfeasance by uh, the suspended, the now dynamic CEO, uh, where he specifically spoke about the unlawful sale of assets and key intellectual property at significantly lower value than their actual market worth. So can we speak to that? Um, Sakina, I, I prefer to uh, steer away from that because there is a disciplinary case uh, underway. Um, however, my comment uh, is that whatever that we do, we are governed by the Public Finance Management Act. Uh, Section 54 of the Public Finance Management Act requires us to seek approval uh, and to ensure that uh, we get best value for the state. In all that we do, uh, we follow that, uh, that, uh, that route in terms of uh, the PFMA. The, 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 the assets that we refer to as non-core uh, is we sit on a, a quite a large property portfolio, uh, as an example. Uh, with, the, with the reduction in the activities that we've had over the years, we've reflected on the property portfolio that we have, and, uh, and part of the plan going forward is where we need to keep it uh, we will keep it where we we don't need to we don't need to keep their property we are looking at selling that property or or renting that property to get uh, alternative revenues in uh, for the business the the other non-core assets that we have is where we may have a uh, shareholding in uh, in certain entities uh, we review uh, the the shareholding in those entities uh, with a view of uh, selling those shares and going through a competitive uh, process uh, to to arrive at, uh, at an end state and obviously uh, go through the, the PFMA. I think uh, what is important is that in all that we do, uh, we are governed by the PFMA uh, because uh, we have to account to the people of South Africa. Uh, the disciplinary procedure notwithstanding, um, uh, Mr. Kobe, the allegation is quite a serious one. Has Danel uh, managed to uh, test uh, the veracity of those allegations? Have you looked at what uh, the suspended CEO is alleging and whether there's any truth to what he is saying? We, we, we have looked at it. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm hesitant to go into the detail because there is a disciplinary process underway. But what I can tell you is that uh, based on some of the, grievance that, the grievances that he had raised, we instituted processes in terms of our grievance procedures. The unfortunate thing is uh, the individual uh, 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 declined to participate in that, despite him having raised the, 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 the grievances. But uh, we, we have looked at it, uh, and there was no substance to it. And uh, you say that process is ongoing because I'm sure, you know, yes. we will hear more about it because it's a case of if you say, um, you know, this tablet was sold for 10 rand and it's worth a thousand rand. Uh, it's, it's quite a simple investigation to actually follow up upon. Definitely, definitely. That's why we are saying that. And the, and the, and the PFMA guides us in terms of uh, in terms of how we deal with such, especially where we are disposing of assets that belong to the state. And just finally, with regard to the Zondo Commission and, you know, the um, uh, findings thereof uh, with regard to Danelle, uh, how far is the entity with following up on those recommendations? We, we are, there are certain disciplinary processes that, uh, that uh, we have uh, embarked upon. Uh, there have been uh, dismissal of some of the employees. Uh, we are working very closely with the Department of Public Enterprises. Uh, to look at where, where uh, directors or, or people may have left the company, how we deal with that. And, uh, and uh, very importantly is we are also working uh, very closely with the, with the special investigations unit uh, to, to deal with some of the, those items. And, uh, 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 and there are instances where there have been referrals to the NPA as well. So there is progress uh, in, in regard to uh, dealing with the malfeasance uh, from, the, from the Zondo Commission. Mr. Kobe, thanks so much for your time. Uh, Michael Kobe is Danel's interim group CEO, speaking to us about the state-owned arms manufacturer Danel, uh, uh, who uh, appeared before Parliament yesterday and speaking about the fortunes turning at Danel.